Hey everyone, it's Bradley. Welcome back to my channel. Portly gentlemen, it's awesome to have you here with me today. Today's video is all about the squirrel. Research it, mash it, boil it, ferment it, drink it, analyze it, share it. Home brewing is good. If you'd like to learn even more about brewing and brewing equipment, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and brew along with me. All right guys, so here it is, the squirrel. I want to be honest, I actually saw this product first about a year and a half ago. I didn't think to search square barrel. I just saw a photo of it on the internet somewhere without any sort of branding. Luckily, Squirrel reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in reviewing the square barrel. And I was like, yes, absolutely. Having said that, they have had no input in this video. This is 100% my opinion and my opinion alone. They are literally seeing this video as soon as you are. Some of you may be asking, what is the Squirrel? It looks beautiful, but I don't understand it. It's essentially an extremely robust and rugged stainless steel frame or skeleton that holds oak staves. There's something special about these staves. I don't know if you guys know it or not, but typically in barrel construction, wine barrels always get the best oak. When they're milling lumber for staves, it's not like sawing boards. They're only taking very select cuts of the tree. This is a very, very wasteful process. Out of a mature oak tree, they may be only getting a handful of barrels. Some trees, French oak in particular, these trees are extremely old, maybe 100 years old. So this is a resource that is dwindling. And the squirrel utilizes 100% scrap, so it makes the best use of that resource, along with some other modern benefits. Barrels haven't significantly changed since I don't know how long. I'm no expert, but I know that a barrel's been a barrel for a long ass time. The squirrel has several benefits. Like I mentioned, it's saving on a natural resource, making far better use of it. You're also able to mix and match different types of staves within your barrel. If you wanted to have French oak, American oak, or some crazy other kind of oak that I'm told is on the way, but not yet. If you have a barrel that you're aging, say a whiskey in or a sour barrel that you really like that particular barrel, you have the ability to remove some of the staves and transplant them into another barrel and potentially bring some of that characteristic to an entirely new vessel, which is really awesome. And a regular barrel just won't do that. As far as comparing this thing to a fooder, honestly, I personally would not even consider a fooder. This one is 10 gallons, which purposely fits my size and perfectly matches with some of my favorite home brewer equipment, which is really, really beneficial. Another area where this is going to be better in the long term, and certainly in a commercial application, is this is infinitely reusable. This thing is so robust, I mean, it's not gonna go bad. I, I really, I can't stress that enough. This, this, this stainless steel is gonna outlast me. I mean, that's for sure, even if I was skinny. It's just gonna outlast me. So commercially, if you're using one of these, you just change the staves. The staves are about $7 a piece. I have a feeling they may come down once overall materials come down the world, if you tried to buy wood right now. They're also a far more efficient use of space. This 10 gallon unit is 12 by 12 by 12 by about 26 and a quarter inches tall. It's also stackable. It takes up much less space than a traditional barrel. And like I said, traditional barrels just haven't changed. There are several downsides. Another thing that makes this a hybrid barrel unitank fermenter is that this will still allow you to have that angel share, that interaction between the wood and the oxygen in the outside. Whereas if you're just throwing oak or oak spirals or whatever into your fermenter, it's not going to be the same experience or the same interaction. The squirrel's configuration, the way it staves sit inside of it, they also allow it to have far more surface area than a standard barrel per its size. You're only using the wood you need in this. You're not using the wood you don't. The wood isn't used to contain it. It's used only to add the certain characteristics you want from the wood. It also has another characteristic that a typical barrel doesn't have is these end cuts that give the whatever's inside, whether it's wine, spirit, or beer, the ability to move into the wood through a different direction and maybe even potentially faster. I believe the squirrel is pressure rated to 120 PSI, which is quite a bit they, they say fermentation range is to 18 PSI. So you can ferment in this under pressure. That means you can also serve out of it. They do sell a Sankey adapter for that. As of right now, they make these in three sizes. 10 gallon, you can see next to me. They also make it in a 30 gallon as well as a 60 gallon capacity. And they all have the same characteristics. They're all stackable and they're all just as strong. 
Honestly, I'm extremely captivated with this thing. Just being in its presence, it's awesome. It has this beautiful matte finish. It's nice and soft to the touch. Far better than a brushed finish or even polished because it just looks better if that matters to you. I believe it's some sort of sand blasting or some sort of metal shot blasting. As far as its overall build, like I said just a second ago, it is extremely robust. This thing weighs a little over 50 pounds and it's a 10 gallon version. It has to be so robust because of the amount of forces that could be imparted on these wood staves and these gaskets, everything that holds it together. The way these straps go around it really help absorb that. It also allows for the staves to move around a tiny bit, which you would have to have in this type of device. So its quality is extremely high. The fit and finish of the welds is extremely good for something that's commercial. As far as a home brewing piece of equipment, I would honestly like to see something with a little bit finer fit and finish on the polish. There are a few rough edges on here, nothing too bad. It doesn't affect in any way how it works or how it's going to impart flavor into your wine or spirit or beer. I'm calling that out because typically home brewing equipment will have a little bit better aesthetic look than commercial equipment, but this one's aesthetics are just super industrial and rugged and honestly it's it's really began to grow on me let's talk about what you get with the base model which is what i have here you get a six inch tri-clamp tri-clamp a six inch blind cap you also get gaskets that go along with it you also get an inch and a half tri-clamp blind cap as well as inch and a half tri-clamp the inch and a half goes on the bottom drain the bottom drain can be used for draining obviously or for sampling they also sell a sampling valve i don't have their sampling valve but I have one here that'll work just as well. They also sell a bottom butterfly valve. I don't have one of their valves, but I have just a regular uh, three position butterfly valve that would do the job. If you were interested, I'll link all those products below. The six inch tri-clamp top lends a high degree of flexibility and you're able to customize this thing. They do sell an adapter with a uh, Sankey uh, port on it for commercial breweries and commercial brew type setups. It also has a PRV. I'm working on a temperature control solution and a closed pressure transfer solution that I will show in the next video. So be on the lookout for that because it's gonna be awesome what I can do with this thing, trust me. Also included are these extremely robust, I believe silicone or some sort of... When you first unwrap the staves, they come in these paper kind of bundles. It's just kind of a cool look anyways. But when you open the paper, you just get hit with this intense smell of oak. It's, it's absolutely mouth-watering and delicious if, if you like wood, and I like wood. Mine are American White Oak Staves Medium Toast. They have staves that are charred if you're into that. I didn't want it for my first go around. I'll get some in the future to try out, but first I'm sticking with Medium Toast American White Oak. It also comes with stainless steel screws. They are a Torx T25, so you will need a Torx T25 bit to install them. And they include four extra screws, which is extremely nice because it would really suck to lose a screw and not have an extra. It's great that they're in there. They have staves right now available in white oak and French oak with the potential to add more varieties later on. All right, let's talk about assembly and the first cleaning. The unit comes fully passivated, ready to go. I did choose to clean mine with some PBW and hot water, about 104 degrees. I let it soak for about 10 minutes. I had to flip mine because I just didn't have a container big enough to submerge it. But 10 minutes aside, just to make sure there was no oil or anything left on the, on the square frame itself, as well as the end cap and the top cap, better safe than sorry, but it is fully passivated, so you don't have to worry about doing that. It is ready to go right out of the box. As far as the staves, they have these mortises or notches or places for the gaskets to fit. I found it was beneficial to first soak the gaskets in some five star star sand. This made them easier, in my opinion, to get on the wood. Do not soak the wood. You don't want to soak this first. That's a bad, bad idea. When you're installing the gaskets, I found it easier to kind of take one end and hook it on the bottom or top, whatever you want to call it, and then pull it over to the top and make sure I pushed it in with my hands very, very thoroughly. Just work it around. It will go into the grooves. It just takes a moment to push it in there. One thing to look for, the top of the gasket on the top of the stave or the bottom, it needs to be fully contacting the wood tightly. If there's any sort of a gap, I'm pointing to one right here where it's incorrect. It's kind of hard to see, but you wanna avoid that. That's gonna cause a leak. Other than that, you should be fine. These actually go together extremely quickly. I do recommend taking one of the screws and going through all of the stave holes, putting the screw in like a quarter of an inch just to get it started so you have a nice clean hole. It makes it far simpler when you're putting this guy together. I actually assembled mine pretty quickly. I found it was a little difficult to do it while trying to film it because I'm big and I take up a lot of room. 
but literally just put the stave in there with one hand, put a screw in it. It's best to start with the center screw, get that pretty tight. They say 55 inch pounds. I don't have an inch pound torque wrench, so I just got them hand tight. I actually tried to use my Milwaukee install driver and it didn't have the, uh, the strength to do it. It had to be on full drill mode. There was no clutch position. So if you have a good robust hand drill, make sure you have the clutch adjusted properly because you don't want to over tighten. Like I said, I did all of mine by hand. It wasn't a big deal. So you want to screw them in nice and tight but not too tight and then the top or bottom run those down. You might hear some pops and kind of noises as the wood settles and the barrel itself as these straps kind of everything kind of comes to alignment and seals up nice and good. Once you're done with each stave and everything's put together, go through and make sure everything is still tight. If you're going to store this thing before you use it, before you fill it again, you're going to want to make sure that everything hasn't changed, tightened or loosened because remember this is wood. It will expand and contract depending on the external environment. As far as sanitizing it, the way I see it, there are three good options. The first option is the one Squirrel recommends, which is to fill it with about 160 degree water and let it stand for about 30 or 40 minutes. That'll make sure everything inside of here is nice and clean and ready to go. Another option would be to put some five star star sand in it and kind of roll this around and shake it around with a 10 gallon, very possible with the 30 and 60, you're gonna need a lot of friends to do it. Like I said, this thing is pretty heavy. Another option would be to use citric acid. This will also work to get everything nice and sanitary. Whatever you wanna do, it's really simple to work with this thing. If you want to clean your staves, the process would be you would pull them out, let them dry, let them come up to room temperature, maybe over a period of a couple of days, then put them in the oven on a tray and set the oven around 160, no more than 180 degrees, and let them sit in there for an hour or so, so they're fully kind of baked. That temperature is gonna kill, I'm relatively certain, all bacteria and bugs that could be in there, so you get some more life out of the staves you have. Uses for the squirrel, obviously, brewing, wine making, and spirits for sure. You could age coffee in this thing, whatever you want to do, it'll definitely do it. It has properties and abilities inherent to its design that make it better potentially than a standard barrel or a fooder. As this thing only uses as much wood as it needs, the stainless steel is going to react to temperature changes quicker than wood as stainless steel doesn't insulate nearly as wood. So if you're trying to affect temperature changes with ambient temperature, this is going to heat up and cool down faster just based on its construction. Like I mentioned earlier, the enhanced surface area lends this thing to an extremely fast aging process. I'm told with the beer I'm gonna age in this, Two weeks is about all I wanna do. Of course, I'll be sampling it throughout. You could also use high pressure. You could pressurize this, let it sit for a day, and then take the pressure off to drive stuff in and out and combine that with temperature change and maybe affect some really drastic aging pretty quickly. Or you could just age like a normal barrel. Just let it sit for a couple of years and see what happens. What do I plan to do with this? The first thing I'm gonna do, I believe I'm gonna do a Bohemian Pilsner I'm gonna separate five gallons in, in a keg, 10 gallons in this and age it and see just uh, what it tastes like after about a week or so. If you guys have a better idea or something you think I should do first, please comment below. I will absolutely consider it and try and make it happen. So what are my impressions of this? As someone that has a lot of experience with unit tanks and other high-end home brewing, fermentation devices and that sort of thing, honestly, I'm really blown away by this product. It's, it's one of my top two favorite products that I've ever got for review, honestly, guys. So thank you so much for watching the channel and making that happen. I cannot say enough what that means to me, honestly and truly. Having not used it yet enough to have any sort of real opinion, I can tell you that it's built very well, as long as it seals up, which to all accounts, it definitely sealed up in my little bit of testing that I've done. This is gonna be an awesome addition to my brewery and I'm super eager to get started. So be on the lookout for a lot of content that's gonna be on the way as this thing lives out its life here in my brewery. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember, home brewing is good. I'll see you real, real soon. I can only imagine what it's gonna do to the beverage once it comes out of this. I mean, under the right circumstances, if I was single, I would just, I'd curl up with the squirrel every night. Oh yeah. That's a wrap.